Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Happy hump day. It is Wednesday. Right, I'm going to get these captions going. Hello, Nukis. Liam says President Tripathi announced, announced in person graduations. Wait, so you're telling me. Are you telling me there's no PowerPoint graduation? Are you telling me there's no PowerPoint graduation? And are you guys going to stand for that? He said in person and live streamed. Wait, does this mean we, we might actually go back in the fall? Hey, that's the plan, by the way. The plan is that everything is back in person in the fall. In-person PowerPoint presentation. What if that's what it was? Everybody came in person and then um, they just showed you a PowerPoint. Feels like they're just forgetting about us, the 2020 grads. Uh, never, never forgotten, Kate. That is, ugh, I'm sorry. We could go back in time um, and bring a vaccine. and reverse the past. Remember 2020 MAE Excellence Awards getting 2019 plaques? What? I forgot about that. Did that... That's embarrassing. <laughs> I laugh about it sometimes. Really? They had 2019? Nookus, yes, you have to now socially interact. This is the new way of things. Yeah, send me a picture. Put put it on the Discord. To attend, we will all have to wear masks at all times, social distance, and test for COVID. They don't have any news on guests or family members yet. Yeah. So yeah, it'll still be still be masking. You remember that video we we made and posted on the SEAS Facebook page? That was fun to make. Man, weren't you pretending to be homeless? Yes. Maybe we'll pull that up at the end of class. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, let's let's get started. Let's get this handout going. Okay, we'll, we'll pull it up at the end. All right, guys, we're starting to talk about the, the root locus technique. Okay, here we go. Let's start with the goal. What's the goal? of the root locus technique. Why are we losing, why are we using this? Our goal is to design a controller 
and we're going to refer to this in its transfer function form. So D of Z, that'll be our controller transfer function. So we want to design this so that we can place our closed loop poles wherever we want. When will we be getting grades back on the midterm? Friday of next week. How was the midterm? Was was the mid? I I assume it was fine. Pretty straightforward. Midterm was fine. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, not too bad. I didn't get too many, too many questions and concerns. It's nice to be able to blast music while taking a test. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss blasting music in class. Z Grid came in clutch. Yeah, okay. So, root locus method is gonna help us place our closed loop holes wherever we want wherever we want the one question was a little weird what does that what does that mean okay the definition <laughs> the okay the definition of the root locus most of you have some idea of what this is but it's it's a graph in the complex plane showing all possible closed loop root locations. As a function of a control gain. It stated what it wanted in a strange way. Gotcha. So, in dynamic systems, you learn how to draw the root locus for a given transfer function. We're going to take this to the next level. We're going to design a transfer function to make a shape of root locus that we need to achieve our own goals. Oh, yeah, I have, a, I have a video to show you for this to make, um, let's see, where are you? I'm going to show you what we can do. Let's open this. Okay, let's open, let's open this. And let me, let me explain this for you. So, obviously you see that we have the, this is the same as bringing in the video cart. <laughs> you mean like the VHS from back in the day? Um, so you see the, the complex plane here, you see our Z grid. Now, these three black X's um, well, actually, let's talk about the two that are on this line right here. So these two X's right here, the complex conjugate ones, these are like my desired closed loop poles. So you can see these have a damping ratio of 0.5. They have some settling time. They, they correspond to some rise time or whatever. So let's say like these roots meet my performance constraint. So this third pole uh that one is going to be moving around um we'll get more into like why why is there this extra pole if i just wanted these two to meet my my certain needs um this red x and this red o the this x represents a pole of my controller 
and this O represents a zero of my controller. So the transfer function for the controller is D of Z. So in this particular example, my D of Z, ha it's a, it has a first order factor in the numerator, which corresponds to the zero and a first order factor in the, I don't even know what I said, denominator to make a pole. But basically as you move around those poles and zeros of your controller, there are, I'm not explaining this in the way I want to, but the, the root locus is this shape here, this curvy line that sometimes looks like a, like a balloon, it's inflating, and then it looks like a peanut right here. But the roots can be anywhere on this shape but for a specific control gain, the roots exist right here where I want them to be at this X. Um, so we're gonna learn how to create systems where the root locus passes through the point that we want. And you notice like there's many, 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 many controllers that have a root locus that still goes through this point. So there's not just one solution. That's kind of the beautiful thing about controls engineering. You can make many different systems that achieve your goals. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll explain that more. We'll come back to it. That's, that's a sneak peek. But that's what we're gonna be able to do. So to, to get to that point, we have to talk about the magnitude and angle criteria. So let me explain how that works. Let's say we have this closed loop transfer function. So if you have a if you have a feedback loop that's like this, you have D, your controller that feeds into G and then that feeds back to this summer. So this is our standard like feedback model that we're using. If you, have one, if you have a feedback system that looks like this, this is the closed loop transfer function that relates the output Y to your reference R. So the characteristic equation for this closed loop system is the same as the polynomial in the numerator. And that's one of the things we cover in dynamic systems. If you have a transfer function, the polynomial that's in the, did I say numerator? The, pol the polynomial that's in the denominator, that's your characteristic equation. So if I look at this transfer function, one plus G of Z, D of Z, if I set that equal to zero, that's the closed loop characteristic equation. So I should have put that here. Okay, so I wanna make a statement here. Oops. Oh, did I just go to a Where did I, where am I? Okay, we're back, we're back, we're back. Sorry, my tablet is going crazy right now, but we're coming back. Okay, so if you plug a value of Z into the characteristic equation, this is only going to evaluate to zero if Z is what we call a closed loop pole. So, so anyway, like the solutions to this equation, the values of Z that satisfy this are the closed loop poles. So let's say values of Z 
that satisfy this are the closed loopholes. And let's let's call these Z star. So they're not any old Z. These are specific values of Z that if you plug them in here, this expression will be equal to zero. So that means that if I take the product of G of Z, evaluated at Z star, and D of Z, that should be equal to minus one. Because 1 plus g of z, d of z is equal to 0. So if I bring the 1 over to the other side, it's equal to minus 1. So th this is where the magnitude and angle criteria comes in. Let's plot g of z, d of z in the complex plane. Which you might say that's a little weird to do because... It's just equal to minus one. It's just a real number. Let's say minus one is right here. It's on the real axis, so. There, we plotted it in the complex plane. G of Z, D of Z is minus one, so there it is. Well, we like to use the magnitude and angle criterion here because um, this so G G times D it's a special case that it'll be equal to minus one Th that only happens when Z is a closed loop pull so if you just plug any other value of Z in here the number might it's it's usually going to be complex or something else Okay, but in the special case where it's actually a closed loop pull, the magnitude, which is just the distance from the origin, that's going to be equal to 1. So this that distance from the origin is the magnitude, and that's just equal to the magnitude of minus 1, which is 1. Let's talk about the angle. The angle is if you were to draw like a ray from the origin pointing through the root, the angle is the angle that that makes relative to the positive real axis. So this right here is the angle of g of z, d of z. And you can see in this case, it's equal to 180 degrees or pi radians. So let's, let's put that here. This is equal to pi. Angle relative to the positive real axis so these two criteria are what we use to build a root locus plot because what is the root locus it's showing all the possible locations that a closed loop pole could be. So like if it's, I don't know if it starts here and then it goes here and then it goes up. So any point on the root locus 
Because if the root locus is the location of the closed loop poles, then any point on here must satisfy the magnitude criterion and the angle criterion. So this is kind of our way of checking if indeed a closed loop pole is a closed loop pole or if it's just any other value of Z that's not a pole. And remember, our goal is to, if I have, like, let's say I want my closed loop poles to be over here. I effectively like want to be able to bend this root locus shape so that it passes through those points, meaning that I could find some control gain so that my closed loop poles can exist here. Don't worry, this will make more sense as we keep going. We just keep, I'll just keep coming back to the big picture every once in a while. But just for now, this is the magnitude criterion. This is the angle criterion. This magnitude has to be equal to one for a closed loop pole. This angle has to be equal to pi for a closed loop pole. Okay, so let's do an example because we'll, we'll show how this works more explicitly. So let's say we have this open loop transfer function. g of z times d of z and let's say it's equal to to this let's say this transfer function is g of z and let's say this transfer function is d of z if we set the gain equal to 0.16 then this product is equal to this All right, if we make a standard feedback loop, then the closed loop transfer function, so this is when we connect the feedback, this is what the closed loop transfer function will be. And if you look at the denominator of this, that's the closed loop characteristic equation. So the solution of that polynomial, which we have here, so the closed loop characteristic equation is this. If you set it equal to zero, the values of Z that satisfy that are the closed loop poles. Okay. So here I want to show how the magnitude and angle criterion work. So I already know that these are going to be closed loop poles. The magnitude criterion says, okay, if I plug those in to my open loop transfer function, so the open loop transfer function is just G times D. And if I take the magnitude of that, it should be equal to one. Because I did these calculations in advance. Like I already know those are the closed loop poles. So if they are, then, then this should be satisfied. So we're gonna do this in MATLAB. I'm gonna show you two commands to do this. We have like the eval fr command and we have the abs command. Okay. Okay, let's go to MATLAB. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to build these transfer functions in. So if you look at G, G was 0 0.58. So this is how you can make a transfer function in MATLAB. So G was 0 0.58 divided by Z minus 
0 0.67. Actually, I should put a minus here. Okay. Now, this doesn't really matter so much in this case, but I want us to get in the practice of doing this. When you make a, a discrete time transfer function in MATLAB, you also want to specify your sampling period. So let's just make up, let's say the sampling frequency was 20 samples per second. So the sampling, frequent, or the sampling period would be one divided by that. Okay, so that's, that's G. Then our controller, what was it? It was K divided by Z minus one. Z minus one. But we need to define what K was. I set it equal to 0 0.16. Okay, so then our open loop transfer function is G times D. Let's run, let's just run this really quick. So I wanna show you what this gives. So you have G 0 0.58 divided by Z minus 0.67. And it tells you the sample time. And it's like, hey, this is a discrete time transfer function. And then this is D. And then when we combine them, we have the open loop transfer function. Okay. Now here's where we're gonna test the magnitude criterion. So Z star, this should be one of our closed loop poles. And I'm just gonna do the positive conjugate here. So if I plug this value of Z into here, this should evaluate to minus one. So this is how you can do it. This is the eval FR command. I think it stands for evaluate frequency response. So you put the transfer function that you want to use, so the open loop, and then you specify what value you want to plug into the function. So let's run this and let's see if it evaluates to minus one. Okay, okay. Close enough, okay. There was a truncation error in my in my closed loop poll, okay? But believe me, it, it's close. Okay, so that's minus one. Now, um, to do the magnitude, we use the abs command. So I could just plug in that in here. So this is evaluating magnitude and to get the to get the phase angle we use the angle command so let's run these one at a time okay obviously it's it's just taking the magnitude of that so it's just the positive and then if we take the angle this should evaluate Okay, that's, that's basically pi, or it is pi. Beautiful. Okay, so all this shows is, okay, so this was equal to one, this was equal to pi, so the point is these criteria are indeed satisfied if Z, wait, if Z is equal to Z star. 
if it's a closed loop pull. So if I went back to MATLAB, this is the last thing we'll do here. What if I just change Z star a little bit? So it's not really Z star anymore. Let's say I shift the real part over. And you ask me like, hey, is this a closed loop pole of my system? Well, I'll check. The function evaluated to this complex number the magnitude, it wasn't equal to one, it was equal to 0.5, and the angle was 1.45 radians. So then you can be like, no, that's not a closed loop pole of my system. Get out of my face. So those two things check, they have to satisfy both to be a closed loop pole. Okay, now we're gonna do Oh, right, we're going to do this. We're going to look at a graphical method for evaluating the angle criteria. So, although we can evaluate angles in MATLAB just using the angle command like I showed you, we need to build an intuition for how different functions affect angles so that we can choose the proper D of Z. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to show you this technique. So let's, let's say we have one function F of Z. What did you write for both the magnitude and angle criterion? I missed it. You mean this, this thing? All I'm saying is that if Z is a closed loop pole of your system, these two conditions have to be satisfied. And just uh, like when you do a control system design, you're going to have performance criteria. Then you're going to choose what you want for your closed loop poles to meet those performance criteria. So at this point, you guys are pros at these steps. That's what test one is all about. So now what this is allowing us to do Design D of Z so that what we want is indeed a closed loop pole. So that's that's kind of a difficult problem. Like we're choosing what we want the closed loop pole to be and we're redesigning our system so that um, it becomes a closed loop pole. Which program do you use? I use OneNote. Okay. So we have, let's, ha let's say we have two functions, f of z and h of z. So these are very similar to each other. It's just H of Z is one divided by F of Z. And let's say we have a complex number Z star, just 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 I. Okay. So I want to evaluate the angle of F of Z. Good note is a good one, but unfortunately paid. Okay. So this would be the angle of Z star minus 0 0.8. And if Z star is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 I, so 
So this would be the angle of minus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 I. So let's come down here. Because I can draw this in the complex plane. Minus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 I. So F evaluated at Z star is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 I, or minus 0 0.4 rather. And the angle is you draw a ray from the origin through that point. And then you just get the angle po relative to the positive real axis. So we can just kind of visually see that here. This is 135 degrees or 2.3562 radians. So now we're going to do the same thing for h of z, and then I'm going to show you a principle. And that'll, that'll be like the point of what we're doing here. I mean, this is the physical significance of the angle. You can always place the complex number in the complex plane, find the angle that it makes positive, I mean, relative to the positive real axis. Um, okay, let's do this for h of z and then i'm going to show you something so h of z is just 1 over z minus 0 0.8 so we're going to have 1 over z star minus 0 0.8 we're going to take the angle of that so this would be 1 over 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 i minus 0 0.8 so that's 1 over minus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 i And what I want to do, I want to make this easier to see what complex number this is. So I'm going to multiply by the, the conjugate. So it's zero point, so it's minus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4i. You'll see the reason I do this. If you multiply this out, it then becomes this. Now the denominator won't have a complex number in it. I mean, you'll have minus 0 0.4 squared plus 0 0.4 squared. So we're taking the angle of this. And this becomes the angle of minus 1.25 minus 1.25 I. So let's draw this in the complex plane as well and get the angle. So minus 1.25 minus 1.25 I. And you'll notice, okay, my scaling doesn't actually accommodate it. But it's, it's like down here somewhere. Let's put like a dot, dot, dot. It's along this line. So this is h of z equals minus 1.25 minus 1.25 i. So if we want the angle of this, we draw a ray from the origin through that root. And then we can get the angle it makes relative to the positive real axis. And I'm actually gonna go negative on this. So the angle here is minus 135 degrees or minus 2.3562 radians. 
Is that even a stable system? No. It wouldn't be a stable system. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is not... Be careful here. Because this is not the location of a root. This is a function evaluated at a root. Is there a reason you used H now instead of another variable? No. I, I just randomly picked these. So so don't worry about F or H. This It's just a function. Okay, so I want to point out this principle here. Okay, so we're gonna have some guiding principles. Um, and this, so this is the first one. We're gonna have two of these. We had one over Z star minus 0 0.8. So that was h of z. This was equal to, well, the angle was equal to the negative of the angle made by f of z. So in general, like if you have, because because this this could apply to other things as well. Like if you had one over z star plus some scalar a that would always be the negative of z star plus a with that factor in the numerator instead okay so that's that's principle one we see that the angles were reversed and the only difference in the functions was that one was the same function, but in the numerator. Okay, let's look at the product here. So the angle of the product. So f of z, that's this one, times h of z, it would just give you this. So we're dividing by the same thing. And no matter what value of z we plug in here, the, the numerator and the denominator, they're going to cancel. So we're going to have the angle of 1. And if we were to draw this in the complex plane, maybe right here, we have the angle of, well, so this is just f the product f of z and h of z and if you drew a ray from the origin through that point the angle that it makes relative to the positive real axis is zero because it's right on the real axis so This angle of one is just zero degrees or zero radians. Okay, so we're gonna bring up another principle here when we're talking about angles. This is equal to the angle of Z star minus 0 0.8 plus the angle of one over z star minus 0 0.8 so this is special it's saying like i'm taking the product of f of z and h of z if i take the angle of that product it's the same as just adding up the two angles together okay and if we use our guiding principle number one over here 
because this is 1 over z minus 0 0.8. This is the same as subtracting. And that's why it went to 0 as well. So let's put this here. This is our second guiding principle. If you have two functions and you take the product of them and then you're taking the angle, that's the same as taking the angles individually and adding them up. Okay, so we just went through this whole thing right now to, to get these two principles. Okay, let's keep chugging along here. You'll see, you'll see why we need this. We have like five minutes here, so we're not gonna finish this example. But now we're at the point where I'm gonna show you like, okay, okay, okay. Magnitude and angle criterion, where does the rubber meet the road? How does this help me actually make a controller? That's what this example is gonna to start to do. Okay, let's say we have our plant, which is G of Z. So it's some first order model for a system. Let's say our sampling period is 0.2 seconds. So that's what, five samples a second? And okay, let's say I want my closed loop poles to be here. So I haven't designed a controller yet. I just have my plant. Analytical dynamics just got canceled for today. What are you gonna do? What are you even going to do with the rest of your day? Okay, so given our plant, given where we want our closed loop poles to be, how can we use the root locus method to get a controller so that we achieve those desired poles? You're going to enjoy. <laughs> I love that face that you've just made. It's St. Patty's Day. You got to celebrate. That's true. Finish my five-page derivation of acceleration for a local vertical. Good grief. Okay. Okay, first. This is the first step, guys. We're going to use the angle criterion. And remember, if... We want this to indeed be a closed loop pole of our system. 